Hello, this is Craig, and I wanted to show you how much further I've gotten. So, here we have a basic character editing screen, and we can go ahead and change our name to something generic like Alex. Uh, all of you Alexes out there are horribly generic people. Uh, no, I mean that it's uh, gender uh, non-specific. So you can change the shape of your bones as well, which allows you to change the shape of your character to be more in tune with what you would like your character to look like. Now if we go into advanced editing mode, this will go away, but we can show you what it would look like without going into advanced editing mode by just choosing some layers. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a female, add ourselves a sweater, and some pants. And unfortunately the sweater and the pants are roughly the same um, color. So when we go into advanced editing mode, it actually has to turn off the bone mod modifications for collision purposes, but that's okay, they're still there, you just can't see them. So let's go here, and you can see that we have the three layers that we added. So let's remove the sweater, it's kind of generic, we don't need it. Let's put on the shirt instead. Um, now you can see the shirt looks kind of sloppy, it's, uh, it's, it's going over top of the pants. So let's tuck it inside the pants and you can see that the shirt is now tucked underneath. Uh, but let's go ahead and create something new. So uh, we've got a new layer that we will make an outer layer and we will go ahead and just make it made out of cotton. How about um, how about this kind of green? So we could paint ourselves up a new sweater or something just by just by choosing any kind of shape we want and brushing it in. We could even paint in some happy little trees if we really wanted. Of course you're going to want to go around back and paint there. Now you notice that there's some stuff left that I need to polish. For example, um, since this paints directly onto the map, the UV map without actually uh, the texture map, sorry, without actually uh, uh, caring about things like actual borders. Um, when you paint with a big brush, you can sometimes get a lot of uh, a lot of random splash where it will paint things you didn't intend to paint. And those are the sorts of things I'm going to have to try and fix over time. So here we've gone ahead and we've created ourselves uh, a little bit of a sweater. It looks a little like it's, it might be a little transparent. I wonder if I have accidentally made the cotton slightly transparent for some reason. So anyhow, once you've gone ahead and just painted it up into however you'd like, yeah, our cotton is apparently only 90% uh, or so opaque, um, which is not exactly what I had intended, but it does give us some interesting... Uh, stuff. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. It's probably just a materials bug, but that's okay. Um, I'll fix it later. So we can go into brush wrinkle mode and we can paint ourselves some uh, stuff like this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm moving real fast, so the wrinkles will look a little bit spotty or a lot spotty. Um, and I'm also recording, which makes it so that the, it, it takes the wrinkles, uh, takes commands in slower and the wrinkles end up getting a little bit more spotty than I might like. But you can use this to do more than just wrinkles and hems. For example, uh, if we really wanted to, we could go in and um, do a little bit of, of just bump map decoration. I have to change it so that it shows the height map here, otherwise it's hard to see what's going on. But you can see that we've just put in a little bit of texture decoration there, and that's, a, and that's actually a bump map, so if the light shifts you'll be able to see it, it's actually indented into the cloth. And we can also do multi... Um, a lot of different materials in one thing, so for example we could go in uh, to this hem down here and do the same thing we did up above, but instead of using uh, indent, we will be actually be using metal. Or a new material. It, metal is the generic term for the material. It doesn't have any particularly metallic elements to it other than the color and the depth. I don't know if you can see on YouTube, but I can see where I'm painting. 
There we are. So now we've got a little bit like filigree or something. Or filigree, however you pronounce that. It's too early in the morning. Now, let's go ahead and name that. Uh, so we go into the info box to just check and see. Um, it has a feminine look, so let's go ahead and change it to a feminine pair of clothes. And let's go ahead and name it Decorated Sweater. And then we'll go ahead and save that by dragging it onto the inventory. So, if we were to stop this and restart it, uh, let's go ahead and pick someone with a different skin color this time. Come on. There we are. And I'm going into advanced editing mode to start with, just so things are a little clearer. So let's go ahead and uh, make our character this time a fat guy. And we will go ahead and put on the pants and the shirt. And that's decorated sweater we just created. And you can see that it fits just as well on him. Um, but the pants probably should be on the outside, so let's go ahead and drag them. And now when we view that, we can bake it down into a single texture. And you can see that we can t see the, the hints of these things uh, through each layer. So this button sequence is the part of the underlying shirt, not the overlying sweater. Uh, and we could go ahead and do other things like create shoes. Um, if I wanted to, I could customize my shape. So for example, uh, let's say that this guy is a little too chubby for me. We go into mesh edit mode, uh, get ourselves a nice brush, and then we'll just shrink down his chubbiness a little bit. There you are. And so you can create a custom character of your own design uh, down to the exact body shape. And you can also do things like apply scars. Uh, you can give yourself a, a strange skin tone. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a character who's been burned or has an unusual pattern on their skin, you can paint that right onto a skin layer. Um, or any layer you'd like, but the skin layer is what's intended for that. So, for example, um, let's go ahead and get rid of that bump map, which is only there for guidance purposes at this point. Um, oh, I can't get rid of it because it's ever... <laughs> Still some uh, uh, bugs. So let's go ahead and say that our character has uh, some, some facial discoloration. We can just go ahead and paint that straight on as a skin layer and you can see that uh, the character has uh, uh, now has this spot on them. And there's a lot of things we could do with that. There's a, uh, no particular reason why it has to be any particular shape or density. Um, and you can make skin layers partially transparent if you'd prefer. So there, now we've got something that's starting to look a little bit like Two-Face. Um, that could be a scar as well, for example. Uh, oh, you can't really tell because it's so scattered. I just drew a scar on. Uh, very interesting, I'm sure you, you care. Come on, you. There. You probably won't be able to see that on YouTube. Anyhow, that's what I did. Um, now that the layer is saved to the database, it's very close to letting other people play with it. Um, it I, will, I will let other people play with it before I finish facial features and hair and so on, but I do want to finish some of the bugs that you've seen pop up. Um, I want to finish basic editing mode, and I want to finish a couple of other details. Um, but it shouldn't be more than maybe a week, and then you guys will be able to play with it uh, and uh, give me some feedback.